This is the most complex three-dimensional object ever created using additive manufacturing. It is a functioning scaffold of a pair of lungs with 200 million alveoli, 4,000 kilometers of lung capillaries, and consists of 44 trillion three-dimensional pixels, or voxels. These lungs represent the absolute state-of-the-art in three-dimensional bioprinting, and have already been successfully tested in animals. But how did we get here, and what makes this technology possible? Imagine a world where damaged organs are replaced on demand, where customised skin grafts are available for burn victims, and where drug testing doesn't require animal testing. As this latest example shows, this sci-fi future might only be a few years away, thanks to the revolutionary tech behind modern bioprinting. Bioprinting has the potential to completely transform medicine and healthcare in ways we can only begin to imagine. By building living tissues and organs layer by layer, bioprinting could help overcome the chronic shortage of donor organs, saving countless lives and improving the quality of life for millions of people. But it's not just about organ transplantation. Bioprinting could revolutionize how we approach drug development and testing, enabling safer and more efficient processes, ultimately bringing life-saving medicines to the public faster. The idea of creating living tissue using technology has been around for decades, but it's only recently that significant strides have been made to turn theory into reality. In 1983, Dr. Charles Hull invented stereolithography, a technique that laid the groundwork for modern 3D printing. Although originally intended for creating plastic prototypes, this innovation later paved the way for using similar principles to build biological structures. By the 1990s, scientists had been experimenting with the use of inkjet printers to build living cells. By modifying the ink cartridges to contain cells and bio-ink, researchers were able to deposit those cells onto various substrates, marking the very first beginnings of bioprinting. In the early 2000s, the field of tissue engineering began to gain traction. Scientists like Dr. Anthony Atala successfully engineered functional bladders, which were then implanted into patients. And by 2003, the first patent for a bioprinter was filed by Thomas Boland, often credited as the father of bioprinting. This pattern marked a significant turning point and brought the idea of printing living tissue into reality. Over the next decade, researchers around the world began to make significant progress. In 2010, Organova, a biotech company, unveiled the first commercially available bioprinter, called the Novagen MMX. This device allowed scientists to create functional blood vessels and other simple tissues. Since then, the field of bioprinting has continued to advance rapidly with researchers making headlines for creating ever more complex structures, like miniature kidneys and liver tissues, and recently hearts. But how do they do it? At the heart of bioprinting, we find a special material known as bioink. This isn't your ordinary ink. It's an incredible cocktail of cells, nutrients, and supportive matrices. Like a master painter blending colors on a palette, scientists can create an array of bioinks to form the intricate designs of life. Bioprinting follows a blueprint not unlike traditional 3D printing, and begins with a digital model. Generally, these models are based on a CT or MRI scan that are imported into a slicing software that creates thousands of two-dimensional slices. From there, the printer works its magic, meticulously placing material layer by layer to print the desired structure. But the real game changer here is the bioink, a living, breathing material. These bioinks are incredibly difficult to make, as they are an extremely delicate balancing act between dozens of factors, whilst also having to remain cost-effective and commercially viable. They also have to be able to serve different functions within the printing process itself, as the tissues are so delicate and complex they can rarely support themselves. Some are there only briefly to provide the shape for vascularization and internal structures before being flushed away to leave behind the incredibly complex tissue architecture while others provide the material for the actual functions of the tissue and help guide cellular growth and development. But arguably, the most important is the structural bioink that forms the entire scaffold of the tissue or organ and provides the framework within which all the other inks operate. The inks themselves can be made from a range of synthetic or natural materials and are optimized for particular kinds of applications. For instance, alginate is a natural biomaterial often used for cartilage tissue engineering, wound healing, and drug delivery whereas gelatin is artificially synthesized and often used for bone tissue, liver tissue, and skin regeneration. Finally, there's DECM, or decellularized extracellular matrix. DECM uses existing material in human or animal tissue, but undergoes a process to remove all the cells, only leaving behind the natural scaffolding material. This material contains all the biochemical cues and intricate microarchitecture inherent to the original tissue, effectively serving as a cellular guide 
directing cellular growth and behavior. These inks are then loaded into specialist printers. Some bear striking similarities with ones you might be familiar with, like inkjet printers and laser printers, while others, like this one, you might not have seen before. This is a stereolithography printer. Stereolithography, or SLA, is a printing technique that uses light to transform liquid bioink into solid 3D structures. The process starts with a pool of light-sensitive bioink. A light source, typically a laser or digital light projector, is directed at the ink, and the areas exposed to the light harden. The printer creates the structure layer by layer. As each layer solidifies, the build platform lifts, allowing the next layer to be formed underneath. This continues until the entire structure has been built. The precision of SLA bioprinting comes from the focused light source, which can accurately create incredibly complex shapes with high resolution. While it can be a slower process for larger structures, in some cases taking months for a single print, SLA bioprinting is a powerful tool in tissue engineering and regenerative medicine. As researchers continue to develop and refine bioprinting techniques, we can expect to see significant improvements in the speed, precision and capabilities of printers. These advances will enable the creation of more complex and functional tissues and organs, opening up new possibilities for regenerative medicine and transplantation. The future of bioprinting will likely involve the integration of this technology with other cutting-edge fields, such as nanotechnology, robotics and artificial intelligence. Combining these technologies could lead to groundbreaking innovations, like biohybrid robots, smart implants and even more personalised medicine. Bioprinting has the potential to revolutionise the way we approach medical treatments, allowing for the development of innovative therapies that were previously unimaginable. For example, bioprinted tissues could be used to model and study complex diseases like cancer or Alzheimer's, paving the way for new treatments and cures. As bioprinting technology becomes more advanced, affordable and accessible, we can expect to see its widespread adoption across various industries, from medicine and research to food production and even fashion. Bioprinting has the potential to transform our lives in countless ways. While it's impossible to predict the full extent of bioprinting's impact, it's clear that this technology holds the promise of a brighter, healthier, and more sustainable future. If patents, intellectual property, and innovation are of interest to you, please subscribe for more exciting content.